We're live. Perfect. Hey everyone. Oops. What's up everyone? Um welcome to another live stream. Today we're going to be talking about how to come up with ideas for cybersecurity projects. And I'm doing this because I I've released some projects over the last um, year or two, and I realized that people typically find it hard to come up with their own ideas for their projects. So I kind of figured it would be kind of good to address that and kind of give you ideas on how to come up with your own projects and, um, you know, brainstorm, uh, come up with your own project ideas, and also how to like implement those projects, right? Uh, because I have done my own fair share of my own cybersecurity projects and I still continue to do projects even now um, as a professional. So um, also how to like document those projects, right? Because those projects show your credibility and it's really important for you to be able to show the work you've done, which is really why you're doing those projects in the first place. So that's what this entire live stream is going to be about. But I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and get started. Um, and since this stream is going to be available afterwards, um, so anyone who watches it can get this very first part um, if they missed the initial part of the stream. But yeah, so the first thing when it comes to doing projects in cybersecurity is um, we should cover why you should actually be doing projects, right? Um, because like sometimes people just see different things online like oh do cybersecurity projects right they're good they're great to help you build skill and all that but you know that's all most people just talk about right um but why should you actually be doing these projects for cybersecurity right first and foremost like i said they help you build and learn new skills right um in cybersecurity having skills that help you do your job um, that help you get better at your job or help you land the job that you're looking for is important right so being able to build and learn those skills is important and a lot of times that doesn't really come from doing a certification um a lot of certifications around cybersecurity are very theoretical um some are practical um but a lot of them are very theoretical so building skills come from the more practical ones as well as you doing projects that can help you build the skills you need to either get into the industry or build the skills you need to get further in the industry right afterwards after building those skills what projects help you do is actually apply those skills that you're learning and you're building, right? So it's one thing to learn a skill, but it's another thing to actually apply the skill to something relevant. That is the actual project, right? The project is the application of the skill that you've built or you've learned from a course or a book you read, whatever the case is, right? So the project is actually the application of the skill. And then finally, right after the application is showing uh credibility in your ability to do certain things right and that credibility comes from documenting your project and putting it out there right so either that be through youtube github on a website on twitter on linkedin right showing that you have done the work right you've created something you've created an, uh, you you took an idea you worked with it and you applied the skills that you learned from whatever wherever and you built something around it gives you credibility and proves that you have the skill to do specific things that are going to help you once again, either break into the industry or advance in your desired field. And finally, when you continue to do more projects, right, it increases your credibility as well as um, your ability to have a portfolio of things that you've done to build various skills, right? Um, so you sort of have like this portfolio of different things that you've done over time and that continues to compound as you build more experience and spend more time um, in the cybersecurity field. As you can see, my YouTube channel is kind of like my portfolio, as well as my blog um, and every other thing that I use to document like things that I'm doing, right? So that's how you kind of build a project portfolio. And then next, after actually um, covering why you need to do projects, the next thing to do is to actually come up with the ideas for your project, right? So in order to come up with the ideas for your project, it starts from what exactly are you looking to learn, right? 
it's it's great to do projects, but I don't think it's smart to just do random projects, right? The goal of the project is to build and apply a skill. So what skills are you specifically looking to learn, right? If you're looking to learn skills around defensive security, well, a good project would be a SIM type project or a detection type project where you're practicing skills around login or you're practice, practicing skills around detection or threat hunting or incident response or analyzing malicious activity, analyzing network traffic, right? That's a project on its own, right? It might be a lab one way or another, but you could definitely build a project around that, right? So come up with what skills you're specifically looking to learn. And in order to come up with the skills that you're specifically looking to learn, you have to actually know what areas or what fields in cybersecurity you're particularly interested in, right? So that comes from either being interested in, let's say, malware analysis are you interested in the malware analysis field are you interested in the security operations field are you interested in the offensive security field are you interested in the cloud security field are you interested in the cloud infrastructure field whatever the case is right figure out what field or what area or what aspect of cybersecurity you're particularly interested in and then use that to figure out what you're looking to learn and based off of what you're based off of that field right take those skills you need to learn for that field and build projects around them, right? That's how you actually come up with the ideas that uh, you're gonna be using for your project. So once again, determine what skills you need to learn, and those skills are determined by what fields in cybersecurity you're particularly interested in, right? And Grace said, it's so broad. Yeah, cybersecurity is really broad, right? Um, but at the same time, there are various niche niches or niches in cybersecurity that you can choose from, right? And Sometimes at the entry level stage or at the beginning stage, it's kind of hard to figure out what you exact what exactly you want to do, right? So experiment with different things, right? So, for example, let's say you for at, during this period of time you're particularly interested in defensive security operations, right? Do a project around that. Over time, you 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 would figure out if you actually like this or not, and if you do like it, you can continue going down that that route, and if you don't eventually like it then you can go work on another project in a different field or domain but narrowing down to something specific right it's better than not doing anything at all or just doing a random project right at least when you've done something that you've you've determined that you don't like now you know you don't like it right and you you know to avoid that in the future but you've learned some skills right which you can take and apply to other things in cybersecurity right that's one of the benefits of cybersecurity being really broad a lot of skills are quite applicable across various domains. So even if you learned a skill for a specific field you're not particularly interested in, it doesn't mean that skill has gone to waste. You could apply those same skills or the same concepts you learned in that project in something um, else entirely, right? So that's uh, how you come up with the ideas to build the projects. Next is how do you actually build the projects, right? Especially if you don't have experience, like hands-on experience, or you haven't worked in the industry, how do you actually get the resources you need to learn the skills to build the projects um, that show your ability to apply skills, right? So this can come from like the certifications you're doing, right? Or even um, the courses you're taking, right? There's a ton of courses out there that teach you so many things, right? And a lot of times, most people typically end up just posting a certificate of completion, right? Certification of completion is great for a Udemy course you've finished or a Coursera course to finish or like a Cyber course you've finished, right? That's totally fine. But were you actually able to apply the skills you learned from that Udemy course, from that Coursera course, or from that cyber course, right? I'm not saying don't do those courses, right? You can learn a lot from those courses, but are you actually able to apply those things you learn from those courses that you're doing, right? So rather than posting those certificate of completion or from Udemy or from whatever provider, right? Take the concepts, take those notes that you took from that course, look at those concepts and think of a product idea that can come out of that, right? That's one way to come up with a product idea. Another thing is one of my, my, my personal and my favorite ways to solve a problem, uh, to, to, to build a project is by solving a problem that I have, right? So all of my projects have come from me solving a problem that I have, right? So from my cybersecurity project, right? It came from me not having a home lab, right? I didn't have a home lab where I could practice my skills and there were a ton of home lab home labs out there in the field but none of them were good enough for what i really wanted to do so 
I took a bunch of ideas. I learned from different blogs and different articles and different YouTube channels, right? Because I'd never done that before, right? I was a newbie. I was, like I didn't know what I was doing. Like I, 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 I had not worked with Splunk professionally before. I had not worked as a pen tester before. I'd never worked with actual firewalls before. So like I didn't know all that stuff off the top of my head. I had to go research, find information, learn about these things, right? Watch multiple YouTube videos, right? Watch a course or two about specific tools or specific things, right? Learn about Splunk. Learn about Security Onion. Learn about how to configure sec like. Uh, the entire project didn't come from me just like knowing this stuff. I had to go read the Security Onion documentation, right? Read uh, PFSense documentation, troubleshoot different issues. So I had a problem I needed to fix. So I had to go learn the skills to solve that problem for myself. And that's how I came up with my cybersecurity project idea. Um, with all, all of the projects I've done, right? All, all the labs I've done on my channel, it was from a problem that I, I was trying to solve, right? Uh, there's a particular project I'm working on right now. Um, it's a Python project, right? It's not really around cybersecurity, um, but it's to solve a problem that I have. And the problem is I want an effective way to quit social media. So I'm writing a, uh, I'm writing a, a Python program that can help me do that, right? So it could have been easy for me to be like, oh, dang, I don't have any ideas on what project to do with Python. Um, so I'm just going to like do a random project or just like um, take this course, take another course on Python. No, right? I have a problem I need to solve. And that problem is I want to have a very um, uh, a nicely automated way to quit all of my social media programs. So I'm going to write a script or a program for that using Python because I'm learning Python. But I also want to be able to do that in a, in a scalable way. So I'm going to add some serverless infrastructure to it in AWS. So it's like that's a problem that I have. And I'm using the skills that I'm learning to solve that problem. So that's one of the best ways to come up with um, ideas for your projects. Solve a problem that you have, either be it cybersecurity related or not. The next thing is to solve someone else's problem, right? If you don't have any problems, <laughs> go look for somebody else's problem to solve. Now, same thing with my cybersecurity project, right? My, as, as much as I was solving my problem of not having specific labs or specific environments where I could do specific things, right? I also figured out that there were other people out there who didn't have access to that as well. So that's a problem, right? So in as much as I'm solving my problem of these specific things that I want to learn, I'm also solving other people's problem of not having access to these things, especially in a very well digestible guide. So in the way I documented my project with video and um, blog formats, right? That way it's easily digestible for anyone who wants to learn these things. So I'm solving a problem for other people out there, right? So if you don't have any problems in your life, right? <laughs> Go solve other people's problems, all right? So that's another way where you can come up with the project, but in, um, in, a, in a cybersecurity sense. I'm not saying just go look for other people's problems and solve the problems for them. I mean, from a cybersecurity perspective. The next is to research project ideas online, right? There are, there are a ton of ideas online. You could never run out of ideas for projects online. Never, ever, right? Google, YouTube, blogs, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub. All you have to do is search, right? If you don't have a problem and there's nobody's problems that you can solve, look for other people's projects online and see what they've done. Now, this is not you stealing their project, right? You doing the project that I did is does not mean you're stealing my project. It doesn't mean that you're unoriginal. It doesn't mean that you don't have a mind of your own, right? It means that you are looking to learn specific skills and this project or projects give you access to those skills. Now, the key thing here when you're doing things from other people's projects is to make it your own, right? A lot of times I see people doing projects from other people's projects like mine, right? And they do everything exactly the same to the T. That's totally fine. But in order for you to actually stand out, you have to make it your own, right? Which means take out specific things that don't necessarily apply to your desired learning goal or to the desired skill you want to learn, right? If you don't if there's specific things in a project that don't apply to what you really want to learn or want to build, then you don't have to do that, right? So in that case, that's a whole new project because it's missing specific things. Or add your own ideas to that project, right? Let's say you're doing this project and you're like, hmm, I think I really want this extra feature in this project that I'm doing. 
then add it, add your own spin to it, add your own idea to it, right? But the point is to make it your own, right? I personally think that if you have access to project ideas online, make it your own. Look for those ideas on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google, on blogs, GitHub, wherever the case is, and make those ideas your own, right? So when you gather those different resources you're going to use to do that project, take specific things out or add your own spin to it. That way, it's not just the same thing everyone else is doing, right? My cybersecurity project idea is um, if you search for cybersecurity home lab on YouTube, it's the very first thing that comes up, right? That means there's thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who are doing this same project the exact same way, right? So there's hundreds of thousands of resumes, right, out there with people with the exact same implementation, the exact same design, the exact same project, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But imagine if you did it a different way. If you implemented something different, right? Rather than Windows, why don't you use Linux in for your uh, victim network? Rather than, rather than using Splunk or even Security Onion, why don't you use Greylog, right? Because you want to learn Greylog, whatever the case is, right? Rather than hosting your Splunk um, in a virtual machine, why don't you host it in the cloud? Right. Rather than, um, you know, use any of any, just take the ideas from my project and completely do it in the cloud. Right. Go read the documentation. Go learn how to host a Splunk instance in the cloud. Right. Or rather than even do that, how how do you automate the deployment of the project? How do you use Vagrant or Terraform to automate the deployment of all of the virtual machines in the project? That's, it's it's a completely different spin to what I did. It's still the same project, but you you're taking it from an entirely different approach. So the, the goal is when you find ideas online on projects you want to do, completely make it your own. Take things out or add things to it or completely redesign everything. Just take the idea and redesign it. A lot of things you see online are just someone else's repackaged idea. Someone else made a spin to something else, right? For like like Uber, Lyft, they're the same thing, but it's like there's different ideas behind both of them, right? Same thing with like social media, right? Facebook was the first one to come out. Next thing we had Instagram just for photos. Next thing we had Snapchat for taking photos with filters, right? It's the same spin off from one original idea, but someone took that idea, made something different out of it. It's all social media, but it's someone else's um, spin off or someone else's implementation of another person's idea. Right. It doesn't mean like they're stealing the idea. It just means that they're taking that idea, adding their own spin of creativity to it and making it different. Same thing with like music, same thing with like art. There's so many things that are not necessarily original. Someone just takes someone else's idea. Oh, this is really nice. I can add my own spin to it. We all have different experiences that make the way we apply things completely different from other people. So this, the way I might apply something might be different from the way someone else applies uh, another thing, right? So it's like, it's kind of like music. So I play the piano, right? Someone else might listen to a song by ear, play that song and come up with various different um, chord patterns or licks or runs that they would apply to that song based of their own experience, based of, based of how they play the piano. And I could come play that same song, right? An entirely different way. It's the same song, but I'm, I did my own spin based off of how I play and based off of how I understand music. So take other people's ideas, but put your own spin to it. If you don't have any problems to solve or other people, or other people's problems to solve. And finally is to plan out the project and then implement it, right? Especially if you don't have the experience, you're going to have to do a little of planning, right? That means like you might have to do multiple iterations of this project, right? So um, trying out different things, troubleshooting, reading documentation, right? Having a nice outline of what you plan to do in order to learn the skills, maybe like some courses you might do or some uh, books you might read, right? I remember when I was building my first project, I had this building virtual machine, machine ma virtual machine labs book that really helped me get get up and running with like building um, virtual machine labs, right? I never finished a book, but I got a ton of ideas from that book, right? I watched a ton of YouTube videos, I read a ton of documentations, blogs. So many things that really helped me come up with the idea and then piece everything together. So that's my take on how to come up with ideas for cybersecurity projects. And in a second, I'll be showing showing you how I actually use Notion to plan my cybersecurity um, ideas. Actually, actually, as a matter of fact, let me just do that immediately. So I'm going to share my screen in a second. Like I said, I, t I typically use Notion for everything. Um, and later, later this week, I'll be showing you how I 
use Notion um, like in different ways. But let me show you in this particular video um, how I use Notion for my project ideas. So this is my Notion board that I use for planning my projects. And these are a list of projects I'm working on. Um, and these projects are like, some are blogs, some are, some are actual projects, some are like video ideas, some are like talk ideas, right? Um, and let me change the view of the camera. All right, there we go. So as you can see here, um, this particular, the first one here is what I was talking about, right? It's, it's called the Twitter Quitter. Um, and it's, going to be done with python i already have the python program like already but i need to figure out how to actually implement my idea in, um, using the serverless infrastructure um, next is um, building like a detection as code pipeline so everything i do um, in my detection engineering role is done as code um, and we use a ci cd pipeline so i want to actually build out one right where i can actually test out different detections and also test out different things for the detections I'm working on and have like a test environment at home that I can use to do that. Um, also in progress, right? So I can track like which ones are in progress um, and, you know, different things like that. Um, this is still a, this is a very, um, uh, a very basic board, I would say, right? Most of my boards are a lot more advanced than this, uh, but I'm just not taking the time yet to actually go into the depth of really um, outlining like the different, um, uh, the different areas of each project, right? So, however, if I go into this project, right, I have, you know, various things that I've written down here, right? Um, like notes I've taken and stuff like that, right? Um, I also have a way by which I categorize the project. So this can either be a blog or it could be a presentation. These are some resources I'm, I'm, I'm referring to for the project, right? So these are, uh, this is a video, this is a blog, um, this is another video, right? So it's like, I have the outline for what I'm doing here, but this is for like a blog or like a presentation. For a more sort of technical project, it's going to be entirely different because um, I might be drawn from different ideas in order to actually build the product. So that's kind of one way by which I track my project. Actually, the main way which I've recently been tracking my projects um, and documenting like the ideas I have, right? Because as time goes on, as I'm learning new things, as I'm um, building my skills, right? I come up with new ideas um, that I want to implement and it's great to immediately document them and have them um, on, a, on, a, on a way where you can track them and easily come back to them, um, you know, whenever you have the time to actually work on and implement these products. But with that being said, I'm going to go into the chat now and start answering questions. So, like I said, I'm new to cybersecurity and I'm looking to cybersecurity thesis ideas. My areas of interest is digital forensics and threat hunting. Well, like there's a ton of thesis ideas you can come come up with that right for me one thing that immediately comes to mind is like you know digital forensics and threat hunting use cases for cloud environments for containers for kubernetes clusters right or like new paradigms for digital forensics and threat hunting um for large-scale infrastructure like there's so many things you can do f like in a th for a thesis around that what's going on what or where can uh, michael brown is asking what or where can a cybersecurity tech participate in a project to gain more experience? I'm not sure I quite understand that question. Is low code and no code from a security perspective a good area from scope perspective? What 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 do you mean by that? Low code and no code from a security perspective. Oh, for uh for your idea? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Like if you can create something out of that, absolutely. That makes sense. Obtaining skills, skill fundamentals through hands. Absolutely. That's the entire premise behind doing projects. Can't stress enough how going through documentation is very, yeah, it is important, right? By the way, what's up, Teddy? Uh, documentation is extremely important. And also another thing I wanted to show, um, actually, I'm going to go to Teddy's channel right now because he's working on building like a vulnerable virtual machine, right? That's another project idea right there, right? Um, and if you guys don't know, Teddy's also a YouTuber. Actually, let me share my screen right now. I'm going to go ahead and share this other screen. All right, perfect. So this is Teddy's channel, right? And you can see he is going through a series where he's building a, a, a vulnerable machine, right? So starts with planning, right? 
That's why it's the, the, the very last thing I said was you have to have an outline for how you want to view this project, right? As you can see in this video, he goes over how he's planning for this project, right? So like the different things that, you know, is going to do with this product. Next is, you know, going through the actual setup, right? All of that, right? So, and uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Taddy is, um, is a YouTuber, obviously, so definitely subscribe to his channel. I'll drop that link in the chat in a second. And also he's a uh, security engineer, pen tester. So this directly applies to his role one way or another, right? Because he's constantly assessing, um, you know, uh, 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 vulnerable environments, right? So maybe come up with an idea to build vulnerable environments, right? That's a product idea right there. So pick things that you want to learn about. But I'm gonna go ahead and share Taddy's link in the description or in the chat definitely go subscribe to him uh, uh do i need to list projects if i'm currently getting hands on experience for your intern or for a company well that's really left to you um i would say if you have space in your, i mean if you have experience right then you'll want to definitely capitalize more on that right so the and at the entry level the reason why projects are important is because you're capitalizing on them over experience that you have now this is not to invalidate the experience you have but this is just to put um more relevant experience um in the face of the hiring manager or the recruiter right in order to validate your ability to do specific things that would apply uh, that would apply to a cybersecurity role however if you're a cybersecurity intern then you want to lean on the things you're doing in your internship, right? That's like focus on those things and maybe even do projects on those things outside of your internship to build more skill. But you definitely want to put your your, your experience above your projects at, in that situation because um, that's, you know, now you have the experience even though it's an internship. So that's my recommendation with that. If you don't have much else to list, then I'd say, but have, yes, that's exactly what I just said. But that's pretty much it. What I want to, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover about um projects cybersecurity project ideas um if you're having issues with coming up with ideas and this video will be readily available after the end of this stream but the next stream is going to go over how to actually plan your cybersecurity career with notion so i'll be going over a full notion tutorial and afterwards i'll be showing you a notion template that i made that is going to be useful for anyone who wants to plan their cybersecurity career um around like various learning resources and how to actually track your progress and your learning goals for the first six to 12 months uh by which you plan on getting into cybersecurity so definitely keep an eye out for that later this week and thank you so much for watching the video um thank you for joining the live stream and participating and i will see you in the next video or live stream Bye bye